This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community, one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, friend. Welcome to ODAT Chat. My name is Arlena, and I'll be your host. The primary purpose of the podcast is to carry the message of hope to those who are suffering from addiction. My guests and I talk about their addiction stories, what happened, what it was like, and what life of sobriety looks like now. Through these conversations, I'm looking to uncover the ideas, changes in perspective, and the daily habits or routines that lead to long-term recovery. Today's quote comes from the 5-Minute Journal. The quote is, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. And that's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Isn't that a great quote? It reminds me of what I hear in the rooms, which is to thine own self be true. I feel like we all experience external pressures to fill the small limited role society wants us to play. So it's really up to us to get quiet, listen to our own intuition and to follow our hearts. I've been writing in this journal since my 22nd sobriety anniversary, which was April 23rd of 2016, after hearing about it from the Tim Ferriss podcast. If you've never heard of the five minute journal, their tagline is uh, the simplest thing you can do to start your day happier. Helps you focus on the positive and become more mindful. If you have a hard time journaling, this is a brilliant tool because it's short and effective. It has two sections, one to fill in the morning and one for the evening. The morning section has three lines for things like um, your gratitude list, then three things that would make today great, and a blank space for you to write a positive affirmation. It really helps you set your intention for the day. The second section is to fill out at the end of the day, and it has space to list three amazing things that happened and space for the final question, how could I have made things better? It's kind of like a mini 10 step. So this is really a simple way to train your brain to focus on the positive and develop a healthy morning routine that can contribute to your emotional sobriety. You can find sample pages online or I'll leave a link in the show notes. So we decided to do something different with the interview today. I've been getting requests to interview my husband, Bob, but I I really just couldn't wrap my head around how to do that one. I mean, what am I going to ask him that I don't already know, right? So I invited a former guest and my dear friend Gabriel to do the interview. He suggested that uh, he interview us together. So that's what we did. I think Gabriel did a great job and uh, we had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to ODAT Chat. My name is Gabriel and I am your guest host for today's episode. Sitting across from me in the hot seat is none other than Arlena, and next to her is her husband, Bob. So it's a pretty special episode all the way around, at least I think so. So say hello, Bob and Arlena. Hello, Bob and Arlena. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, hello, Gabriel. So uh, for you folks at home, just to paint that uh, mental picture, Bob is the one with the lower voice. (laughs) <laughs> so keep that in mind as we listen through today. And so I hope you guys enjoy this episode. So Arlena, starting with you, why don't you give me a little bit of your stats here, age, all that kind of stuff, okay. sobriety. I know. It's so funny because I always do that to my guests. I think when you were on, it. Oh, did the yeah. Same I'm in charge you. now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of payback. So I am 49-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 49. Um, I'm, I'm pretty short. I'm 5'3". Mm-hmm. Just started wearing glasses recently. I'm going blind, apparently. I'm fucking adorable (laughs) and very humble and modest (laughs) bob talk crazy so yeah i'm 48 years old i'm about 6'1 um you dropped a bunch of weight yeah recently just dropped a ton of weight devilish good looks yeah completely handsome (laughs) charming the whole night so now i didn't know that you were a little bit older yeah. I did not know that. He likes to say that he's two mm. years older than me. I like What to year say, were you born? I like to say that that's 1968. What year was I born? 1970. Two years, Damn. buddy. So we're actually 14 months apart. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's like <laughs> two years. I did not know that. Yes. That's adorable. Yeah, 14 months is not two years. So you just started wearing glasses. 
I did. I yeah. just started wearing reading glasses. Ah. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was going to be the coolest thing ever, like a new accessory that I could use. It's a freaking nightmare. Yeah. Turns like, out, no. Yeah, I'm just, I'm blind as a bat. I never bring them with me. So every time I look down at my phone, I can't see Readers or else. distance? Readers. Yeah. Okay. Me yeah. too. So I never know when to have them on and when not to have yeah. them on. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. Do you want a little trick for being at a restaurant? Give me some. So what I started to do when I, because I'm <laughs> super vain, or I, I would just, be, I'm old and forgetful, is I bring, I break out the phone mm-hmm. and open the camera app, and I. Will, <laughs> I know where you're going with the zoom I and all that. Z- yeah. I zoom into it. Yes, technology. So, yeah, that's <laughs> I feel like I, the the six million dollar man with that. It's the modern day version of the magnifying glass. <laughs> So tell me something, Arlena. You are from this area originally? Yeah, I actually grew up in the, on the main streets of Sunnyvale, California. Right. I stole your line. Were you going to say you grew up on the main no, streets? No, of, no, no, oh, no. Okay. Probably. Radnich says that all the time. Yeah. Oh, says Willow Glen. Yeah. Willow Glen. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so Sunnyvale is like the all-American happy town. It right. seems like very nice neighborhood, um, very middle class. My parents are very, like, super nice people. They're, mm-hmm. Neither one of them are drug addicts or alcoholics or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I was raised in a Christian household. Yeah, so. So when you were, uh, what year did your parents separate? I know that. My parents divorced, actually, when I was about, I thought I was about seven, but recently I had a talk with my mom, and, and she says that I was maybe between five and Five and six. Okay, so a so little bit earlier. A little bit Those are significant. Yeah, it's a significant difference between five and seven, actually. Right. You know, yeah. For developmental so stuff. So young. So where did you live? You went to mom's house. You went to dad's house. Yeah. So uh, my mother is still in that same house in Sunnyvale, and that's where I was raised oh, okay. until I was um, an obnoxious teenager. Right. And right. then my poor stepmother got me when I was fourteen, and then I went, and they're in Cupertino. Another. So okay. So at some point, <laughs> mom says enough is enough. And well, you go to dad's? So it was like, you're being mean to me. I'm leaving. And she was like, cool. If you leave, I'm signing custody of you over to your dad right. because you're not coming back. So it was a one-way ticket. And they made <laughs> yes. that really clear. She no, did. I, I, I think that that's what so you have to do. You yeah. know, I mean, you can't. Or you're going to have the kids just play each other, you know, back and forth all the time like that. So Her thing was, I'm... I'm not going to let you ping pong back and forth right. between me. Like, you're not going to use us that way. Yeah, exactly. That's, she had great you know, boundaries. Yeah. It was really not cool Boundaries. For me. Imagine that. What are those? What are, what are boundaries? <laughs> <laughs> so you have siblings? I have an older sister. She's okay. two, uh, two years older than me. And then I have a younger stepbrother who's five years younger than me. So okay. when I went to go live with my dad... It was my dad, my stepmom, and my stepbrother. But he and I are super close. Oh, okay. So were you the pick of the litter as far as addiction and, and stuff like that? Were you the one who got it <laughs> yeah. and everybody else is? Uh, or... Yeah. I have a friend who says um, there is a lot of alcoholism in my family, and you're looking at all of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well so, put. Well put. And yeah. so, Bob, are you from this area also? Yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. I actually lived uh, or grew up in a house probably a mile, mile and a half away. So, uh, yeah, born and raised. Okay. My parents as well, you know, uh, they got divorced when, what are you, in kindergarten, about five? Yeah. I think yeah. it's five. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't so, know. yeah, so my parents, um, God bless my mom. I grew up with my mom. I was the terror in the family. I'm the mm-hmm. baby of the family, right? So I have two older sisters. They got divorced, uh, as I said, when uh, I was about five. My dad moved away, had married uh, my stepmother. They're, you know, my dad has since passed away, but... Uh, they're married for a few years, but he, um, you know, I don't, I don't think he would mind me saying because he's pretty free about this is that, you know, he had a problem, not just with alcohol, he, you know, he passed away with about 40 years of sobriety. Right. Uh, but as we all know in the recovery community that, uh, drinking is just a symptom, right? Mm-hmm. So he had other addictions, one being, um, sex, like mm-hmm. love, falling in love with other, so he, he, uh, um, had girlfriends and all that stuff so it was kind of crazy right and i barely saw him growing up but um you know that's that's part of my story and we can get into that some other time or or maybe later in this conversation but yeah to answer your question i grew up here um born raised san jose california and uh so i didn't hmm. know that about your dad for some reason i i pictured you guys being closer because i know that your dad had i mean you had some lineage in in recovery yeah you know there was uh um and we talk about your friend, our, our friend Kevin yeah, and his dad, yeah. and they were really good They ran friends. together. They, in the program, okay. they not ran drinking, but uh, Jerry um, met with my dad, 
and they hit it off. They were meeting okay. buddies, right? So in, yeah, yeah, so in sobriety, they yeah. they were buddies. Yeah. And and your mom know nothing? Yeah, so my mom, she's still alive. God bless her soul. She is an angel. Uh, if I really look back at my sobriety date, she was instrumental in me mm-hmm. getting sober. Um, but um, she's up in Yosemite place. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're actually right outside Yosemite in Oakhurst. Mm-hmm. You know, she's 40, gosh, got to be 47, 48 years of al on. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. she's, she's one of the most spiritual ladies I know, like that's I said a, earlier. That's a long time. And I've never yeah. even heard of anybody in the al Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's incredible. And she, yeah. she's, there's nothing else. There's no addictions. Or no, she, wow. the day that I got sober, yeah. she told me she's, I'll never drink again. She's Because wow. she used to have her wine, right? Like, yeah. And she's, she is definitely not an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. But... Um, she decided at this point on, you know, well, she's not going to drink. So right. that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible support. Yeah. And your sisters? And yeah, them? sisters are completely normal, good people. Um, so you know, it's just like Arlena. Everything yeah. was you. Yeah. And you were, active, you were yeah. a lot of the, yeah. You were the alcoholism yeah. in the family. In, in my immediate family? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Really? So I remember uh, the first time I met you, Bob, was mm-hmm. in a meeting and I was feeling, I didn't know anybody. I'd seen your face. So I, I sat down before the meeting started and, you know, and I do the thing that I do. I'm like, how long do you got? How yeah. long have you been around yeah. here? And you told me how long you had. And I'm like, look at you and I'm going, <laughs> Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, yeah. you're a young guy. Yeah. And you said, yeah, I came in when I was, what were you, 19 was 18, or something 18, like that? yeah. And I said, I had nothing else to say. I just said, man, you must have been a fuck up. <laughs> 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 you started yeah. laughing. You know, yeah, I didn't know yeah, you at all, yeah. but I didn't know what else to say because yeah. it's like, that's an incredible, yeah. that's an incredible story, yeah. you know, because even though you come in that early, you've lived that life yeah. for whatever short period of time you were yeah. there you you know and i know yeah. your story even better and we'll get into yeah. a little bit more of it but uh that's incredible yeah that's incredible. thank you yeah so um arlena you move back in with your dad or you go to your dad's house mm-hmm. and things start to take off because i guess you're of age by then right you're what well, I moved into my dad's house when I was 14, so mm-hmm. that's, I had... Right when a young woman becomes a oh, terror, a terror. <laughs> or so I hear. Yeah, I had probably been a terror. I, that was probably why my mom and mm-hmm. I didn't get along, because I was just So real quick, out. what is what is acting out? What was what, what kind of things was Arlena doing? So when, my, when I was growing up, my mom, she's a very different person today, so let me just... Mm -hmm. I'm going to hedge all this with today above laughing. Um, I'll hedge all this by saying my mother is the person that I hope to be. She is positive and loving Mm -hmm. and patient. And Mm -hmm. I I really, she has her shit together. I love my mom and I want to be just like her now. Mm -hmm. That was not the case when I was 14 years old. Sure, everybody's allowed to grow, right? (laughs) Yeah. So when I was 14, she was in her 40s and she was, um, (laughs) I tell my boys, you know that little sweet old lady who comes over to visit? (laughs) Yeah. That is not the bitch that raised me. (laughs) I've heard that line before in reference to many people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I get it now because I have two teenage boys and I have a full time job. I have a Mm -hmm. lot of responsibilities and I'm fucking tired sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but I have tools and coping skills where she did not. Right. So she was just angry a lot. And even that generation didn't even think about the idea of finding a better solution. You know, that was before therapy was as big as it is now and Mm -hmm. it was just. You know, I mean, it was therapy was falling out of people's pockets back, you know, nowadays. But now, back then, it was just. I feel like it was just starting then. Like it has evolved significantly from like the seventies. But she was actually exposed to things like Est, and Est was like one of the first. Yeah. Actually, my dad did that as well. Oh, Trippy. really? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, oh that God. was big. I don't know what that one is. Thing um, that, Est is like a um, one of those uh, life spring or. It's like one of those programs, like a changer, like a Tony Robbins. Program, oh, okay. I guess, okay. for lack of a better. It but was really popular in the seventies, I believe. Like super late seventies, right? Yeah. And this Early is something 80s, that something she attended. Like that. This is something that she had looked into. Well, she was. Ex- <clears throat> I say she was exposed to it because these are, the, the program was for people who were trying to change their lives, and hmm. so they they would put you through this like. It sounded kind of like attack therapy, or they kind of break you down. Mm-hmm. My mom was having none of it. Mm. She is so strong in who she is that mm-hmm. she's like, I'm fine the way I am. And so they, what brought her to that? Did somebody oh, she say? She was dating somebody. Who oh, was super, there we yeah. go. There we go. So <laughs> she wasn't ready for anything like that. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, but you know what's funny is she dated um, this guy, Al. You know Al. But uh, she was dating a guy that was in a 12-step program. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Al, alcoholic? <laughs> 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 Add that in. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, she was dating Al. <laughs> and um, when I was 14 years old, and she started to, and I think that was about the time that I left. So mm-hmm. it was like she started to, I think that was before I left, she started to change. She started right. breaking down principles. Hmm. Like the principles about like what's, he would say, um, it's not your job. Like she would get really upset about what was going on with other people. Mm, mm. And he's like, it's not your job to fix them. Right, right. You know? So like he was somebody, saying things that eventually you were going to be hearing, you know, in in, in recovery. About, yeah, in about yeah. 11 years. I got right. sober at 25. It's wild when you, you know, I had the same experience with uh, uh, my mother-in-law at the time. Right. Janet and, and her telling me, and I remember looking at her going, fuck you, you know, and then... <laughs> You know, what a couple years later, you? just those things you need to own your, what's your oh, part in this? And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? I was, <laughs> I had no idea what she was talking about, but I knew I was angry at her and for saying those things. And then I'm sitting in a meeting maybe two months into sobriety and it was like, bing dong. And all these lights came on like, holy shit. She was, this is what she was telling me. I yeah. feel like, um, that is an important message. Like what is your part? But there needs to be some groundwork first. Like oh, yeah. I read a book, um, by M. Scott Peck, The Road Less Traveled. And it was the first time anyone had sort of laid out the information like in every relationship, it's a 50-50 shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you can't take control of the other person's 50%. Like you really have to focus on yourself. That is tough to do, you know, especially when you live your life the way uh, addicts and alcoholics naturally do. You know, it's about control, you know, and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Did you, so your dad was in recovery. Yeah. So when he finds recovery, Um, how does how does that affect you? Um, it's interesting. That's a that's actually a really good uh, question because my dad obviously they they weren't together mm-hmm. and my dad moved away right. So uh, to step back a little bit, my dad was in recovery and being in recovery in my experience that I've had now, um, you know I wasn't around him all day so I can't judge him or, or speak to exactly the man he was uh, mm-hmm. during that time. But when I was with him, he raged. Absolutely mm-hmm. scared the shit out. Terrified. Even in sobriety. In sobriety. Yeah. And you know, we can get into my uh, experiences in sobriety because I've been there mm-hmm. and now I know that. And so having that in my, you know, I, I almost think that the rage and the anger, at least in my family, I can only speak from my experience. It's almost inherited. I learned that, you know, even because, I, you know, I'd spend a couple weeks during the summer with him, he would terrify me, right? Terrify mm-hmm. me. There, there's a, there's a, one story I have I'll never forget. He owned a houseboat, and he was so terrified when he got it to park that thing, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it took a lot. Like, it, you had to control it. Very expensive. He would rage at the top of his lungs. And, and when he would rage, this man was a big man, 6'1", six, 6'2", six, deep voice, very deep voice, right? Mm-hmm screaming at his kid you know i'm maybe seven or eight at that time and i would run in the bottom of the houseboat there's this little cubby hole where they would put blankets and i would pull out the blankets and jump into this hole wishing that i could just disappear oh, wow. in this black hole because wow. this guy it was one step before physical abuse yeah. do you know what i mean yeah absolutely. and he was terrified i know that now i was terrified mm-hmm. so my experience growing up with him was rage right, right. it was anger right. um and that's yeah. that's dry. That's being I mean, dry. completely yeah. dry. You have yeah. no idea about that until yeah. later on. Yeah. But to circle back to your question about recovery and all that stuff, I knew my dad. This is what I knew about recovery at that young age is I know he had two birthdays. There was his belly mm-hmm. button birthday, which I got, totally got. And then there was this weird oddball one <laughs> that I thought was some kind of like, um, you know, uh, it's a cult, baby. It's a cult. It's, uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> some yeah, kind of exactly. freaky, what's, what's the second birthday yeah. stuff, right? So how, how, was your, how was your mom's relationship with him, you know, even though they're divorced and all of a sudden so, your mom's kicking yeah, ass and Alan yeah, on at some point, yeah, which comes later. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, so she was heartbroken. Um, I believe to this day, and, and she's told me that was her true love. Yeah. Right? He was, uh, you got to understand, I mean, look at... Uh, I, he was just a handsome. I have a picture. Amazing guy. Yeah. Handsome. Yeah. handsome. Incredibly handsome. Incredibly charming. Yeah. Incredibly. He was athletic. Um, and she just fell head over heels sure. for him, right? Okay. And she was beautiful, but she was down. So she was very. Um, I have a lot of traits of my mother. Like, I, am, I wasn't a womanizer when I was out there, right? Um, I'm very loyal. Um, you know, when I look at Arlena, she's it. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, she's the love of my life. Right. If some, God forbid, if something were to ever happen to her, I'm done. I told her this. Yeah. I will never get married again. This is it. You know. Yeah. And people might go, Oh no, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, no, I know. Yeah. I'm done. There's nobody that can replace it. So she, that was her love. And that's right. that's a trait that comes from mom. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously but yeah, it's kind of yeah. off doing this yeah. thing. And they just never spoke until later on in life after I got sober. Right. Yeah. So at what point does your relationship ever change with your dad? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't until sobriety. Okay. So yeah. hold on. We'll get yeah. we'll get to that. We're approaching that now. Yep. Now back to you, Arlena. Um, so when you by the way, you're super good at this. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're when you're you go now, you're living. <clears throat> With dad. Yes. And who's in charge there, dad or stepmom? I was. <laughs> uh, hey, that's a good answer. Shit. They say this. I got to circle back here. I wasn't expecting that. And they say the sickest one rolls the house, yeah. right? Oh, Wh- whoever yeah. is the sickest is yeah. in charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, but my... Um, well, did your sister follow you to oh, go no, there? Oh, no. She still lives with my mother. Okay, so she's day. like, get rid of Arlena. We're... You know. Yeah, like she, my sister, I did, you know, she didn't really factor in at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, my mom was like, I'll take care. You know, the discussion between my parents was you'll take care of her financially and all that. And I'll take care of, you mm-hmm. take care of this one, I'll take care and of that one. And even split or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so, and my, my dad and my stepmom are very, they have big hearts, mm-hmm. right? They're very, and it's kind of interesting because my dad's a former Marine. Mm-hmm. But he is like the biggest softy on the planet. He tells oh. Bible stories and starts crying. Oh, wow, he's a yeah. sweetheart. Of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a he's a total softy. Yeah. And my stepmom was this uh, literally a hippie from the '60s. Like she grew up in San okay. Francisco during the whatever you call that yeah. period of time. Um, and so they were both. So your mom was kind of a free spirit. So so my looking into that. Yeah. Oh, your stepmom. My stepmom. Okay. So yeah. and they and they're together. So when you go yeah. and you live there. Who, I mean, you say that you're in charge, but what what adult in that house are you kind of like, okay, this is the one I'm going to go to? Like, did you have a good relationship with your stepmom? I did. She was one of the big reasons why I moved okay. in because she was more like a big sister in a way. Right. Okay. That's kind of what I'm getting at. I was trying to figure that She's one out. She's like, 16 years younger than my father. Okay. So um, she was more like a big sister. She was very different from mm-hmm. both my parents and uh, just the biggest hearted, sweetest right. person ever, right. and, but also no boundaries, really. Right, right. And my That's dad. What we're looking for. We're looking for yeah. <laughs> yeah. To my take favorite kind of, of people in the world yeah. are the codependents. <laughs> I love them all. So, so is your, your drinking taking off? under their roof or what have you tried by the time you were 14 so by the time time i go to my dad's house Mm -hmm. it was the summer between seventh and no eighth and ninth grade Mm. so um, it's a big summer yeah so i had already been drinking Mm -hmm. i had gone used to drink before junior high sometimes Mm. i had some bad episodes happen by the time I was 14, like some bad things already happened yeah. because of my drinking and using. I was smoking pot and drinking quite a bit. Right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I forgot what your question was. So I'm just, I, <laughs> me too. I'm just into that. I'm wondering, like, when you start, when you started using, like, how okay, heavily yeah. you were into it. Was, it, it I was already in full flight. Okay. So you're starting to get the phone calls from school. Are you getting? No, I'm not getting into. No I'm not repercussions. Any, anything no, like that. No real consequences. Other than I would have hangovers mm-hmm. and try to pass it off as being sick. Is anyone in the house looking at you going, hey, there's a problem here? Or were you able to keep it under wraps well, during this time where you're at your dad's house? Yeah. My, so my stepmom was an occasional pot smoker. Mm-hmm. And um, so she recognized the, some of the signs of me yeah. smoking pot. And yeah. she, Eating all the Twinkies in the house <laughs> and your eyes are bloodshot. Yeah. She picked me up, me and my friend up one day and we were blazing. Yeah. Yeah. Super high. And uh, she told my dad, and I was like, I felt so betrayed. I was like, you hypocritical, yeah. Yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what I about can't... peace and love? God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I, right. I, I remember I, when I used to get high, I'd come home, and my mom knew, and, and she would answer the front door. I'd come home from like a football game or something, and I, and I would lean way back, <laughs> and we would talk at the front door, and she would look at me like, why don't you just come in, you know, because I didn't want to pass by her. So I'd be like, yeah, mom, well, the game was crazy. And I'd tell all these stories about all the stuff that happened. And looking at them, it'd be like 15 minutes would pass, and I'd still be standing on the porch, and she was just like, house. this idiot. Yeah, a fucking moron. <laughs> Scared to pass it. Yeah, just to want to, you know, because I stank so bad yeah. at the dank. So. <laughs> so is this, this stretch at your dad's house carries you through high school? 
I, my senior year, I decide it's not working out of my mm. dad's house for a variety of reasons and decide to go um, crawling back to my mom's house. Okay. So she let me come home my senior year, but we quickly fall back into our old ways of mm -hmm. fighting and arguing. Uh, my mom has a way to do everything and her way is the only way. And mm -hmm. she has a very specific way and I never did it right. Right, right. <laughs> kind of a situation. Yeah, I get it. And she's a total clean freak. I'm a total slob. So Are you a slob? Oh. <laughs> you want to have a topic on that one? Let's do side I didn't, right? I didn't oh, now, Chad, that. welcome to the... the to you know. <laughs> That's next week's episode. I, uh, I did not know that about you. Okay. Well, okay. I feel Ooh. like I've gotten better over sure, the years. You have. You have. I, when I come to your house, it's clean. But I mean, I come for parties usually, so yeah, I, it I better usually, be clean. I know, you, I know. I know you're coming. So that, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so unannounced. So. No, you know, it's funny. When I walked up here, I walked past your car and I looked in and it was one of those subconscious things. How does Darlene keep her car? Your car was perfectly clean. Yeah, I just cleaned yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I, actually the neat freak. I married my mother. Yeah, so am I. That's what happened. I yeah. married my mother. Very clean. I, me too. So yeah. I've gotten better over the years, but yeah. we've you been have. together um, like 23 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this is actually a topic that as a couple, <laughs> a couple in recovery, yeah. we had to do some work around. Mm -hmm. Like I had to, I can't, you know, I, I know she did. But he did all yeah. the work around. I had, no, <laughs> not, I mean, like internal, am I, mm -hmm. how am I going to do this? Am I going to accept this or am I going to be pissed off? Am I going right. to be... <laughs> you know, am I going to be right or am I going to be happy? What's my choice here? So totally to understand that. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome to hear that because I mean, I, it's I'm miss, I'm like I'm kind of a neat freak, and and usually the guy is yeah. the guy who's just throwing stuff around, and it's like yeah. uh, that's whatever. I mean, it, you know, whatever works. Yep. You know, Opposites works. attract, I guess. Yeah, but you always present so nicely. You always dress very nicely. Well, or, you I've know, gotten it's not, better. You're not like a well, slob first, or anything. I mean, yeah, he calls know. me the lever router. Yeah, and, and which is. So my way of doing things is, like, the cleanup part is a little bit delayed, where he cleans, he goes kind yes. of a guy, yeah. cleans up before you sit down and eat kind of a person, mm -hmm. and I'm cook fast, <laughs> eat, and then... And maybe tomorrow morning I'll clean up. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm so efficient. I cook and clean at yeah. the same time. But Spotless it, kitchen makes better food. Bam. And what what happens is that's a spiritual pearl right there. <laughs> Go ahead. What happens, Bob, is the person who waits to do the dishes gets jumped on by the person who mm. does them, and we'll just do them for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Does yeah. that happen? Oh. I have openly admitted and recognized that if I just sit still long enough, he will do them. He will totally yeah. do them. That's that's the story. I'm Our mind. children, I'm my kids have learned that about me specifically. Oh, They're just oh, like, yeah. just let it be. Our Dad kids learned that too. He mm -hmm. has taught the kids and me <clears throat> that if we just hold mm -hmm. tight for a minute, he will. Handle I it. find such peace and happiness in oh, cleanliness yeah. that yeah. I will do it. it I'll, I'll do it. It Seriously. tortures. It tortures yeah. him Seriously. to see a, a sink full of dishes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just I I feel more at ease. At peace. I five to that oh, one, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. You're not off the hook, bro. though, yet, Bob. We're spiritual. <laughs> so you go, mm -hmm. you're with your mom. Mm -hmm. Dad is sober. Yeah. And you're starting to use. Yeah. And is dad looking at you when he does see you no. and going like, oh, boy, here it goes. No, he's in Colorado at this point. So you're, it's, it's hidden. Yeah. And mom. Yeah. What's mom's mom take on it? Mom, it, denial kicks back in, right? We start with, what, what do we start with? Yeah. Pot? Uh, drinking. Drinking. Actually, if we really want to go way back in time, the very first time um, I ever felt any kind of buzz was mm. chewing tobacco. Mm -hmm. It was called Hawkins. Okay. I was in the sixth grade, and me and my buddy, his name was Jason at the time, he got it, and, and he's all, you need to try this. I oh, loved boy, it. Yeah. I loved that buzz feeling. Remember? Did you get sick? Yeah, I spun, but I, 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 I loved it, right? Yeah, right? So sixth grade. And then I remember seeing, a, this is how crazy the times have changed. I remember filling out a little postcard that they put in a magazine. I don't know, it was a mad magazine or something yeah. for a free can of chew. And I sent it away <laughs> to get my free can. My mom intercepted. But uh, yeah, wow. so. Okay, well, hold on. So your mom sees mail. that yeah. come and does she go, is that a discussion? Uh, no, no. But uh, later on, um, she, we had a talk about Yeah, that, right? I remember cigarettes yeah. coming in the yeah. mail for my mom. Yeah. Try these out. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, really? Going in the backyard yeah. and trying them out. Nuts. Yeah. yeah. Nuts. Never wow. happened today. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You can't even get near a cigarette. They yeah. don't but, sell them in uh, vending machines anymore nope. either. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, so when you go and you're starting to use and you're starting to pick up a little bit yeah. more, uh, obviously you got sober at 18. 18. So this is a 
this is a fast, very fast, fast and furious, yeah. you know, fall. Yeah. Um, describe some of that, you know, because I know you got into things other than alcohol. Yeah, obviously. Abso- absolutely. So it started with alcohol um, at my buddy's house. One of my, uh, there was three of us, uh, four all together that uh, grew up, and and um, I love these guys, even though I don't, I don't talk to them a lot. Um, I see, you know, Facebook and stuff. I keep yeah. in contact, but uh, we grew up together, ran since kindergarten. And their brothers, I, I forget if it was like a New Year's or somewhere after that, or they just had a party. And my first drink, my actual first drink was uh, seventh grade. I think it was seventh grade, maybe beginning of eighth. And um, we drank warm cores, and I put uh, dried out Copenhagen in my mouth, right? And right. I got so sick. I'm like, you know what? I, how do people, how do they do this? How do they drink, right? And yeah. at that time, it, it wasn't appealing to me. And then, um, but that was the very first time I got it. Right. And you know what's trippy about that story is it was not about, I saw the booze and all that on the counter. And I remember inside, you know, internally the dialogue, right? Going, that's going to change me. That's going to, wow. I'm going to feel different if I drink that. Okay. Right. Okay. It wasn't like, oh, I wonder what that tastes like. Right. And I don't know where that message I was came from. That. Yeah. You're, you're no in- clue. No clue. Uh, I've always, I mean, if we run it back, dude, if we run it back, you know, I was a kid that was, I was into everything. I would Mm. set fires. I Mm. would, um, you know, I got in, uh, my first time my rights were ever read to me was in the seventh grade for vandalism, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I just like the way that I felt when I did something wrong. Living on the edge. Yeah. It changed the way, whatever changed the way I felt. Mm Mm-hmm. It, it's it amazing. Great. It's amazing yeah. how we can how we do that. Yeah. How, how our stories are so similar in, in yeah. those little actions that yeah. take place from from birth. You know, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. So, were you getting into trouble like that? I mean, anything that he described, or were you just strictly alcohol and stuff? Um, I I don't remember. The only time I got in trouble, I think I was in high school, mm-hmm. and I went through a little um, shoplifting phase. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The girls. <laughs> I hear women do that. I hear that it's. Uh, is that know, a, yeah, I don't I, know. I've heard a lot of women that say they get into like shoplifting or, you know, like yeah. that's their little crime when guys are doing stuff like we're ruining things, yeah. like, like graffiti yeah. and, you know. Yeah. 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 If boys do vandalism, girls do shoplifting, yeah. I guess. I, didn't, I never really thought about it, but that's, that's I true. I, I, was... I think I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I really don't know. I'm good, though. <laughs> right? I'm buying Bob agreed with you right do. away. I'm yeah. picking up what you're putting <laughs> Mr. down. Mr. Graffiti Master over here. Right? <laughs> I was tagging stuff before it was cool to tag. Right. You know? That's right. He's burning <clears throat> shit down. He was yeah. So did you get any phone calls? Like, when was your first phone call where, you well, know, from got, outside the okay. house saying, hey? Yeah, so a couple times. So I got caught shoplifting. A bunch of girls at school were, like, shoplifting makeup. They were talking about how easy it was. Mm-hmm. And so um, I started doing that. And then finally I get caught. I get sort of arrested. When you get caught, are you alone doing it? Or were um, you with a group? I was with a girl. And I don't remember whether she got arrested as well mm. but um anyway my stepmom was cool about it and mm. she had she, but they she got some sort of form and i don't know if it was from the police or if it was from the store mm. it was like a sears or a, a like a big store right mm. and so they took us they said i we know that you're shoplifting come with us and so i went with him and they sat us in this room and they anyway i don't Bob's laughing because he has a shop. So I did. No, the shop. I did, and it just. I just flash. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but go ahead. So I was six years old. Six years old. The first time I I shoplift. So I'm a Batman guy. I I love Batman (laughs) to this day. Batman. He's the only true superhero. Right. You with me? Batman. (laughs) So six years old, dude. In uh, I wanted Batman from Alpha Beta. Alpha it's beta. no longer there. It's yeah, Petco, know. you know, Branham and Meridian. Mm-hmm. I walked four or five blocks, right? At home? At six years old. Can you imagine? Down the street. I now. walked into Alpha Beta because I scoped it when I went grocery shopping with moms, right? And I wanted that, and she wouldn't let me have it. Yeah. I walked back. I grabbed that thing, put it in my pocket, walked out the door. And my dad, after my mom found out yeah. that uh, I shoplift that stuff, my dad was coming over for whatever reason. That motherfucker, he was in the, in the program, right? Yeah. That fucking guy, at, excuse my language, at six years old, I had to walk into the manager oh, yeah. and make amends, bro. <laughs> hey, I yeah. stole this. I apologize. And I remember, <laughs> I was terrified. And the manager's like, you know what? We could call the cops. Yeah. Dude, you know what you? I mean? They scared yeah. the shit out of me. At six. So Scared straight. My <laughs> boys <didn't> are work. <laughs> six and nine. And yeah. this is probably, I don't know, six, seven months ago. Same, same exact thing. We yeah. went in and they 
came out with a yeah. this little canister of gum. Yeah. And we, when we got to the house, I, I see it. And I'm like, I didn't buy that. It's like I, I did the same thing your dad did. But yeah. I basically told him, go take care of it. I drove him to the store. Yeah. And I'm like, that's who you need to talk to. You need to figure this out. And yeah. they had to go return it. And I, I wasn't part of the conversation. I didn't yeah. make him apologize. I yeah. said, you just need to go talk to him about you know what you did. Yeah. And, wow. and they did. And then turned around and walked out. I don't know. I To this day, I don't know what was said. Interesting. Wow. But I just told him, like, yeah. you know. Because yeah. my kids are, you know, I mean, they're they're uh, yeah. compassionate little dudes. So, yeah. you know, when you get a kid that age, they're going to feel that. They're going to feel mm-hmm. every part of that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really fun. <laughs> yeah. But Batman's a little bit more worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Batman. Oh, dude. <laughs> Tell them how you lost Batman. In the ocean. I, uh, the same? Dude, I have my favorite Batman. Yeah. To this day, I have a special spot in my heart <laughs> yeah. that aches for this Batman. <laughs> the Batman doll, the it's figure? An, a, a dude, it was a smaller one. Six you know, inch mi- one? yeah, six inch one that I lost in the ocean. I was Somewhere took him ocean. to the beach, you know, flying around. Batman, Mom, what's up? And then, uh, yeah, the Gone waves though. took him out. Yeah, Gone Dude, forever. I'll get you one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll get you another one. You deserve one. Okay, so you guys are graduating high school. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't graduate. You didn't graduate. <laughs> no. I'm sorry to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, that's all right, so, buddy. Actually, so, Arlene, you're graduating great. high school. I, you're about to move on to barely. the next step of your, of your life, yeah. mm-hmm. and you're. How how deep into this thing are you now, into uh, your disease? So, um, yeah, I'm pretty deep. So I was about, to, I forgot to tell you that I was going to say, I, so I go back to live with my mother, right? Mm-hmm. And she and I are not getting along. We actually get into a physical fight. Not oh, like, okay. Yeah, like a, a shoving match. And um, I had been dating this guy, uh, first real boyfriend, mm-hmm. and, and he's a little bit older, so he has like a studio apartment and stuff. And I leave. We get into a physical fight. I'm mm. like, I'm out of here. And I moved out. And I'm in my senior year of high right, school. Right. Mm. And I've worked since I was like really young. I had a paper out when I was a young girl. Really? Oh, that's cute. That's yeah, I was the only girl in my neighborhood. She's a go-getter. Yeah. I mean, look at She's got this podcast. She's got a yeah, full-time yeah. career. She's got... You Sorry, teach her how to do the dishes. Off, you'll have a, you I know. Do I don't do the dishes, but I have other things yeah. going on for me. She but, um drive. So you go, you move in with this boyfriend, and yeah, he's... Yeah, I have my own job, I'm so, you know, and I'm, at, I'm 18 in my senior year of high Does school. Does he want you there? Is he like, yeah, let's oh, do for this. Sure. So, okay, yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah, he takes me in, it's all good, and... Does um, he drink? Does he use oh, yeah. what's... he drinks and he does coke. Okay. Yeah, and he'll, he doesn't like that I smoke weed. I think he smokes weed occasionally. I don't really remember okay. too much. Is um, this the bodybuilder guy? No, this is Jerry. I was actually oh. engaged to him when I was oh. 18. Oh, well, that would have worked out fine, huh? I'm sure it would have been fine. Actually, I didn't even make it that far. I had a friend in high, uh, at my gra- the night I graduated high school, a friend of mine, one of my best friends, this guy Troy, he pulled me aside and said, don't do it. Yeah. He was right. the only one who had the cojones to say, yeah. don't do it. Right. And I listened to him because I was scared. My relationship with this guy, Jerry, was not stable. His parents were alcoholics. And so mm. I was like... I must. It must have felt like love to him because he was accustomed to being with people that were alcoholic, mm-hmm. and I was that alcoholic. Oh, so you were you're you were showing honest. signs like that. But like, I always had a job. I finished school barely. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember. So my high school. I, I barely. I say I barely graduated because my senior year, halfway through the year, they made you sign this contract. They say if you finish these classes you'll get to graduate. Mm-hmm. So I finished those classes, and then when I went to check out of school, they looked in the system, they said, oh, you had, you took a mm-hmm. math class twice, and so it doesn't count as credit. And I lost my shit. Yeah. And so the de- I, I, got, I went out and got hammered, mm-hmm. and called the dean of students crying, being like, I signed the paper, you said that if I did yeah. these classes, that you'd let me graduate. And so they let me graduate, right. but I was, drunk and crying on the phone and just but you had a good point i mean a contract's a contract i mean you, yeah you know, they I gave a, you this list and so they, anyway yeah, yeah they yeah. let me graduate but what you're saying is you're really not a you're really not a high school graduate you, you, oh, you no. gotta go back and take that other class oh, damn <laughs> i didn't think of it that she's way. been poking at right. you about your graduating status <laughs> <laughs> you got one over on right <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, I barely graduate i get to walk through the ceremony and all that mm. my you know, when my mom and I would fight when I was growing up, nobody ever said sorry. The time okay. would pass, a holiday, a birthday, we'd miss each other, and mm-hmm. then we would just act like nothing happened. Yeah, right, right. So n- nothing was ever resolved. It was Never. just like another Band-Aid on top of a bunch of bullshit. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, I mean, it was volatile. It was just under so the that, So is that a life lesson to you? I mean, is that something that you carried for a yeah. long time? That's how you do things? You 
burn the shit down and you don't apologize, you don't make amends, you just sort of... Well, move what was on. interesting is the first time, so I got recovery through the 12 steps, and the first mm-hmm. time I did an inventory, um, that was the first time I was able to see, like, writing it out in black and mm-hmm. white that I was taking inappropriate responsibility for others, mm-hmm. like in the form of trying to control other people so that I would feel okay. It was all selfish. Right. And then I was taking in like not enough responsibility for my own life. Okay. Like I wasn't able to see how my choices and actions and behaviors were affecting other people. Okay. And so I was the victim. Like all I saw was their response. I didn't see or provoked their response, awesome. which was my part. Right. So that was the first time. So after that, and listen, my mom didn't have those life skills. So it wasn't like she could teach me. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's the same so, for most of us, you know, yeah. you know, that yeah. don't have um, parents that are either in therapy or recovery or anything like that. We're all just flying by the seat of our pants, by the you know, seat and we're victims in it or we're going to, you know, persevere or whatever. Yeah. So let's get to the the final stretch before you get into recovery you know um because usually it's pretty much a blur as far as the the behaviors are the same it's the same Mm -hmm. shit night in and night out go through that real quick and get us to recovery so my i bottomed out around a relationship so from like 20 to 25 i didn't have a boyfriend and i really believed that i had like a little bit of a love love well all right right, a little sex and love addiction Mm -hmm. (laughs) going on myself because Mm (laughs) (laughs) earmuffs go ahead we've all heard this in your chair i know my my tagline is that if it was in a bottle a bag or blue jeans (laughs) i was doing it well i and i've said this before and i've told you this a few times the first time i've ever heard you say that and i probably had like three months sobriety i was i was so (laughs) turned off (laughs) <laughs> like I was like I cannot believe this woman just said that, and then somebody goes yeah that's her husband right there and I'm like holy shit this is <laughs> little but I know I mean how far you know I just I had no idea but I remember being like offended oh I know by that yeah um, it was so let me yeah. just let me just I'm a tell prude you, you're you are <laughs> yeah. a prude it was hilarious I love that about you it makes it super fun to poke fun at you yeah <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> easy, easy yeah. target yeah. it's fun to make you blush it's not that hard. <laughs> Um, and I'm so uncom- I'm so comfortable with things yeah. that make other people uncomfortable. I right. lose perspective sometimes. Um, but so people I'm- call that an asshole, but I'm not going <laughs> to say that. Right now. <laughs> I love making right. you feel like shit, Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go it's ahead. Like a sport. So I remember the first. I remember one time this lady came up after. I said that at a meeting and mm. she was like, oh my God, I was so embarrassed for you when you said that. Yeah. And I was like, bitch, please, you were not a nun when you got here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's just come on back to reality. Right. Nobody shows up to Alcoholics Anonymous a virgin. And I that's what I had to learn too is that I learned a ton from you ladies as far as like, you know, there's a difference between men and women in sobriety. I mean, we, mm-hmm. you know, we, a lot of times we come here for different reasons and, and the pain and the misery is similar, but it's yeah. different. And, and you know, that's, that's what taught me it. So, yeah. 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 So I, I was, so what got me to my bottom is that I, I really believed that love was going to fix me, but my mm-hmm. concept of love was skewed. It mm-hmm. was distorted. I confused like I thought if you were willing to suffer my insanity, that meant that you love me. Right. And I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I would push, I was pushing people to their breaking point to see how, how much pain they're mm-hmm. willing to suffer in order. Like, I don't know if I'm coming across right, but I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So if they were willing to deal with my crazy, like I would have these drinking episodes and I have a crazy night. And if they were willing to stay for that, that meant right. that they loved me. That was me. your dude. Yeah. 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 So, but so needless to say, I was single for a long time because mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody likes that apparently. Yeah. Well, weird. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I find this guy that I think is my ideal. Mm-hmm. What, I, and I have, you know, looking back, I can say that what I thought was what I wanted wasn't. Mm-hmm. So this guy had pretty packaging, but on the inside, it, he there was no substance behind. It. Like it, mm. like there's no integrity principles, no right. guiding purpose, no. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I was losing what I thought was my ideal because of my drinking and using. Mm-hmm. I had a sales position, and I was going out and getting drunk really late at night with my customers. I'd come home. Drive home, loaded, mm-hmm. and uh, make an ass of myself. Oh. And it was just rapidly, 
I was rapidly, I had no girlfriends left. My job was, mm. I was in jeopardy of losing my job. What year was this? Like uh, 90... 94. 94, 93? 93, 94, because I got sober yeah. in 94. That's amazing to think of you without girlfriends, you know, because I mean, you're right? just so well known, you know, within the community of women here. Yeah, so, I have yeah. a lot of girlfriends yeah. now, but I didn't have any friends. Right. Like the friendship, like women relationships and friendships, I was completely baffled. Mm. And I was so scared because, so I bought them out and two of my customers, dudes, um, were in the program when I bought them down. And these two guys were like, Randy and Mitch, I'll never forget them. Randy sort of broke down what the the steps were about and Mitch took me to my very first meeting. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it was kind of counseling me. But Those guys still around or are you I don't, you? I don't know because Mitch was um, in the Fremont Fellowship. Mm-hmm. Okay which is a good 45 minutes away, let's yeah. say. And Randy was in a fellowship in Redwood City. Okay. Also very far away. Okay. Um, okay. And I just knew them because they were in my sales territory. So I would, you know, they okay. were my customers. Um, <clears throat> that was a God thing. It was a God thing, right? And anyway, both those guys were like, you need to work with the women. And right. I was terrified, but I was so, my bottom was dark in the sense that I was incredibly lonely. Mm-hmm. I was so sad. I was losing this relationship and there was nothing I could do about it. It was just spiraling out of control. I thought I was losing the one thing I thought was going to save me. Um, I had abandoned, I grew up in the church, but I abandoned God a long mm-hmm. time ago because I couldn't be good. I had decided along the way, if I couldn't be good, I was going to be good at being bad. Yeah. And so I embraced my all the bad things that I was doing to make myself all the unhealthy coping mechanisms, right. the using people, the drinking, drugs, all that stuff. Um, I embraced that lifestyle. Yeah, you can find comfort in anything if you make enough excuses for it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean typically most people find unhealthy coping skills, mm-hmm. right? Food, oh, shopping, us. sex, yeah. gambling. You know, the reason I started the podcast is because I wanted to address all forms of addiction and all forms right. of recovery, which mm-hmm. are many. But at, so at the time, uh, and that's how I got into a, uh, I started out doing a 12 step program. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of funny because the very first meeting I ever went to when I was 14, when my mom was dating that guy in recovery, mm-hmm. we went to an AA picnic when I was 14. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there was a, I remember seeing a young girl get uh, go up to the microphone to pick up a chip. And she said her name is she was an alcoholic. And I was like, but she's a young girl. Right. And She's then, not a hobo. <laughs> yeah. She's not an old man yeah, in a trench yeah. coat with a paper bag, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I had never even thought about women being alcoholic. Yeah. So, um, I mean, neither did the big book. I mean, you, you read it, and it's like very much like all about the day. Hey, little lady, be good to your man, you know, type <laughs> of shit. Yeah. So, so you go to you go, you go to this event when you're 14 years mm-hmm. old, and then is that the only time you ever went? Or yeah, when I yeah when I was little, and it was so when I was 14, it was so funny because this guy speaks, and uh, his Jack name Jack H. Jack H. And um, this guy Jack gets up and speaking. He has a very distinct story because mm-hmm. he's talking about how he would get drunk with his dog and he would get a little shot glass out for his bird Petey. And the bird Petey would drink this alcohol, get drunk, and chase the bird, the, chase the dog around the house. <laughs> Amazing story. Yeah, and he's super funny and charismatic. And I remembered that and that's story. The Jack. Do you, yes. So I don't know him, but I know <laughs> no, the I, I'll tell this story. This Go is ahead. this is trippy. So Jack was my dad's sponsor, right? Jack, wow, that's get amazing. Out. Isn't that crazy? Now yeah. trip on this one. So the house that I was born and raised in, when my parents were still together, was built by his good friend, which is Al E, mm-hmm. who passed away with sixty some odd years. What was it? Sixty nine, sixty eight, sixty nine. Yeah, brought sobriety to this valley. Yes, right? Jack and Al were pillars of mm-hmm. the the twelve step, you know, a, a community. But um. They, yeah, so I grew up in the house that Al built. My next door neighbor was Jack Holt, and uh, he sponsored my dad. And um, it's just interesting how that man and the other man, Al, yeah. and how many lives they touched. Yeah. You know, I mean, we listen. have a picture right here. Yeah. We're sitting. I, just, I was just looking at that. Yeah, yeah we're, so we're sitting Al. in my living room, and I have a picture of that's, that's me. Jack Holt. Jack and that's Bobby as a little boy. Oh, and his sister. If I hold this up to the microphone, can the people yeah, see exactly. it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll put. You a know, it's of it. uh, yeah, it's amazing. I remember hearing <laughs> Al E's yeah. name yeah. when I first came in. Oh, you know, and he was this and that, and I, it doesn't resonate with me because I don't know. I'm new. Yeah. 
But I, I started to get the picture that this guy was a big deal. And big I remember deal. my uh, huge my father-in-law at the time, JC, mm-hmm. yeah. I found out that his sponsor at one time was Ali. And I was like, kind of like, hey, yeah. guess what? Yeah. Yeah. Little did I know the guy sponsored everybody under the, every man <laughs> under the sun. Yeah. You know, at one point yeah. was, you know, sponsored by Ali. So the guy was there's, just incredible. There's, um, for the people listening, there's, uh, I, I forget the website. And we'll, we'll have to find it. But there's recordings of them both oh, out yeah. there. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's in AA.org or something else like that, but um, you know, I'll follow links. up with you. Something okay. like that, we'll but amazing speakers. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. amazing speakers. I highly recommend uh, listening. So. so, Bob, let's take you yeah. on that trip from yeah, right up to uh, sobriety. Can I'm sorry. Can I just interject one thing? Because yeah. I think the um, funny thing about another coincidence around Jack was when I go to my first meeting that was for me. Mm. I go to a meeting and there's this old guy speaking. And he tells the story about how he would drink with his bird and the bird would drink. And I was like, it, does this guy speak at all the meetings? <laughs> <laughs> he is AA. That's pretty yeah. I was like, is that's, this the president? That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So you go from 14 and then you go, you show up in your 20, what? Five. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That, yeah. It wasn't my first meeting back, but it was like, oh my God, there's that. I've heard that. Does he speak at all? Yeah. Is or he do, the president? Do all guys give their birds liquor? <laughs> I thought maybe he was the president. <laughs> the president. Okay. No, I'm the president. Of the right, 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 right. Sorry, sorry. But anyway, go ahead. What am I talking? What so we're saying? going to, want? we're getting you into sobriety. Oh, okay. The so you, you give us that last little run. Yeah, absolutely. So I got sober at the age of 18, November 24th, 1988. So I will, how about, you know, during that time, uh, I talked about, um, I, I'm a firm believer that um, I'm hardwired a certain way, right? right? From the gate. You remember I was hardwired talking about. Hardwired to self-destruct. Yeah, exactly right, buddy. <laughs> um, that's so true. I love that line, or that song. I believe that I had a whole that uh, now, now you know, in recovery, I know it was uh, could only be filled by you know. I like to call it a God-shaped mm-hmm. hole, right? Nothing else would fill that. Mm-hmm. So I tried various things, you know, lighting fire. We you know lighting went through fires. all that fires, yeah, yeah. Uh, sports, guys in sports. You know what I mean? Um, girls. Uh, so to speed up through my uh, abuse of drugs and alcohol. Um, Fast forward into high school is where, where, when it really kicked off, mm-hmm. right? Really kicked off. And the second time I drank, it was magic. It was that elixir that just changed the way I felt, and mm-hmm. I knew I found it, right? Because it filled that hole temporarily. It worked, right? And then you throw in the combination of cocaine, because back in the mm-hmm. 80s, that was huge. Right. Huge. And it was easy to get, Right. You know, what's funny is I, the, the the people that I ran with, I didn't even have to buy it half the time, mm-hmm. right? I, I, gosh, maybe three quarters of the time. I, it was just everywhere, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I had a, those three friends I grew up with. There was one uh, one individual that he and I, um, uh, I love him. I love him. And, um, you know, I can't, I don't know what his path is, but uh, if he ever needed help, he's still alive. Mm-hmm. I, I would bend over backwards for that guy. But uh, he was my road dog, right? Mm-hmm. And we would do lines, you know, all, all night long, right? Mm-hmm. So that combination to, you know, my stories, you know, we can get into that some other day. But it's, it's, a, it's your typical acceleration cocaine brought me to my knees, right? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't uh, my mother. I told you a little bit earlier that she was an angel. She was saving grace. And when her Al-Anon finally kicked in, because she went into denial. Dude, I have my mom who had 30 some odd years, uh, you know, 20 at that time, maybe, um, or 15, somewhere around there, right. buying me alcohol. Right. I convinced her, for mm-hmm. the folks that are out there and remember this, is Bartles and James, right? These yeah. wine coolers yeah. were yeah. huge. I those commercials with the yeah. two old dudes, yeah. And I convinced her that, listen, it's like fruit punch. Just, yeah. it's, don't worry about that. And I had her go to the store for me and a buddy and a girlfriend. She did yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's how good I was. Well, at that time, <laughs> what, how old were you? What was the problem? Dude, I, I was mean, probably 15. Oh, okay. 15, okay. 16, maybe. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so are, is your dad and his buddies, are they no. looking at you like, I mean, is he seeing any of Dad's that happening? Gone. Dad's gone. Oh, so he's, he's gone. Around. He's Colorado, right? I hated that motherfucker. So, but there's no. Oh, yeah. okay. So there's definitely. There's no speaking. Okay. No, he okay. would call from Colorado. This is how powerful this guy was. This I'm full blown alky, right? I'm partying all the time, mm-hmm. right? You know, and he would call from Colorado and said, "Listen," uh, he would just talk to me on the phone. He goes, "Listen, I'm going to call you back in 20 minutes." 
you better be at this phone. I would be terrified sitting by the phone. He would call my friend's house, right? From Colorado. Yeah. I thought he was going to take a plane and come out. And that's how terrified I was of him. What was that all about? Uh, I don't remember the circumstances around that one, but he was just checking in. I think at that point yeah. in time, my mom said, hey, we got... So, so they would talk a little ear. bit yeah. that yeah. something's going on because to speed up, I didn't graduate high. I got my diploma in rehab, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, there was, you know, in high school, they had work experience at that time. I have no idea if they have it now. I couldn't hold a job, so I couldn't, you know what I mean? I'd right. show up for a day or two or, Just you know, in bed. Right, right. So we got informed I wasn't graduating. Right. And um, I think it was it was all coming undone. Then I was mm-hmm. just a, an absolute mess. Right. Nobody wanted me around. My parents, my sisters were disgusted in me. Um, my mom finally hit the bottom. And I remember she telling me that uh, she had that moment of clarity mm-hmm. that I was exactly like her ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Right. And then for me, uh, the most powerful, th- powerful thing ever is uh, she Finally, you know when an Al-Anon is done, they are done, right. and they're not going to take any more. And I remember trying to come in, I think it was like 5.30 in the morning, because my goal was always to get in before the sun came up. Mm-hmm. Because if I was out and up for days on end, that meant I had a problem. But if I made it to my room, mm-hmm. like a vampire, right, coming up with the sun, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to get in there. It's <laughs> funny the excuses we make for ourselves. Oh, crazy. Little, the yeah, arbitrary the games. rules. Yeah, yeah arbitrary yeah. rules, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So your, mom, your mom's done, and now you yeah. go to rehab. Yeah. And and how yeah. much time are you yeah. spending in rehab? So I actually, so there's a story there, and I'll be quick about this. So that, you know, I was trying to get in mm-hmm. early in the morning, and she opened the door, and that once again, uh, I'm sure people can relate to this, um, that disgust mm-hmm. and disdain and, like, what have you become look in her face, right? And uh, I pushed her aside physically, get out of my way, walked in. At this time, my sisters are gone, right? I'm, I'm a senior in high school, right? I'm 17 years old. Um, actually, yeah, 17, about to turn 18 or whatnot. And about, uh, you know, I'm not going to say it on this podcast because it, it breaks my heart the way that I treated my mother, mm-hmm. right? But um, I remember about 20 minutes after me stumbling to my room, so jacked up on cocaine, I couldn't sleep, right? Go, you know, convulsions that night, the whole night. It was, it was a bad night. And uh, she opens up the door and says, listen. Um, and when she opened up the door, I said some choice words that mm-hmm. I'm not going to repeat here. And that's what I have to carry. Uh, I've made amends, but still there's some things that sure. are hard to let go. Um, but she said, y- y- you're either going to see a counselor and get some help. Or you're out of my house. Mm-hmm. And when an Al-Anon is done, they're done. Mm-hmm. God bless Al-Anon, right? Saved my life. Um, so uh, I knew it was true. And uh, I ended up going to a counseling session um, and basically saw a counselor and told them what they wanted to hear type of thing, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I thought it was done because I was so good at lying. Remember, I convinced my mom to buy me alcohol, yeah, right? Yeah. So I told them what they wanted to hear. I said, yeah, I took a couple drinks. I smoked weed a little bit. I never copped to cocaine, right? Mm-hmm. Um And I got home. I thought I was off the hook. I'm good. I went to the counselor. We're all clear here, right? Because I do enough to make things right. To you know what I mean? You know that drill? That's called manipulation. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But then, but then she pulled the whammy, right? She ordered Jack H to come pick me up to take me to an the neighbor's anonymous meeting. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So that started my journey. That was when the seed got planted. I'll call. So it he's you're now. you're in the car with Jack. Oh my god! And yeah. he's I mean he's got to be licking his chops. I, I mean because an alcoholic yeah. knows an alcoholic, yeah. right? I mean, he's like, going. Yeah. He's just going yeah. like I've yeah. been watching you, buddy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so you get in, and um, did you come in and out? Yes. Absolutely. A little um, bit, not three times. Uh, if you look in my big book, I have three different sobriety dates crossed out, right? So um, I couldn't stop smoking weed. <laughs> what was what was the stretch of time that you were having? Were you doing months. a week? Were you doing Weeks. months? Yeah, I would have uh, days, thirty days, go out, right? And at this time, I've been to a handful of meetings, right? Um, and uh, I moved around, pulled some geographics as well, mm-hmm. um, and then what really clicked. Um, I know I'm kind of all over the place, was November 23rd Mm -hmm. of 1988. I convinced my mom. At this time, I had like 107 days. I moved. I tried living with my dad, who was a rageaholic in Colorado. That did not work. You did make that move. Yeah, I did make that move. And and he just didn't know what the hell to do with the son, right? Mm -hmm. He never, you know. He hadn't parented. No, he had no clue. God bless him, right? Mm -hmm. But I had a bill. It was not working out, right? So I moved down to Santa Barbara. My sister was, uh, at that time, going to the UCSB. So I lived with her for a little bit. 
This is in sobriety. This is, well, this isn't sobriety, but I've been a, a part of, like I went to a handful of meetings and I thought I, I had it, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was kind of like, you know, I guess that does count as sobriety. Yeah. You, you tried it. Were you tried it my way. Yeah. How were about you that? using during that time at all? No, I was dry. Okay. So at this point, uh, towards the end of my drinking and using, I was shut down, closed. I just, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't very outgoing. I was terrified of people, right? So you take away those, that magic elixir that I talked about, I, I'm, I'm shut down, right? Right, right. So then ultimately, I'm very thirsty at this point in time. I'm mm-hmm. dry, right, in terms of program. Um, I convinced my mom, I, I'm, I'm good, I'm sober, hey, one day at a time, to, you know, I the buzzwords. Yeah. I threw it out there, and she accepted me back home. Mm-hmm. And then that November 23rd, or excuse me, sorry, uh, you know, I did, I had one more run, mm-hmm. right? My buddy came up to me and said, hey, you want a light beer? And I, you know, that just made sense, a light yeah. beer. That was my problem. I was drinking hard stuff and cocaine yeah. and, and mushrooms and all that stuff. That's uh, the problem. If only it worked that way. Right? <laughs> It's but like uh, here is yeah. yeah, so that was a first big run. I went on a three month run, mm. um, and then November twenty third, and that that run included yeah. coke and everything. Everything it was the off thing. the hook. I okay. left my mom's house, and then it was really a moment of uh, it was a spiritual experience that I had on the twenty third. Okay. Changed my life. So since then, yeah, you've been working the program and doing the deal. Yeah, it was so powerful. So what year is this that you make? Nineteen eighty eight. Okay, so now where are you at nineteen eighty eight, Arlena? Um, that was like the year after high school. Okay. Oh, so you're still on. So I'm. So yeah, still on a few I don't. Years. Yeah. So. Well, how long? How I'm when did you guys meet? Like, what? How long were you guys <laughs> uh, in the program? When okay. You guys met? So now we're getting to the good part okay. because so <laughs> yes, I, we are. I show up to Alcoholics Anonymous, ninety pounds. Mm-hmm. I'm a hundred something. I'm more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm more than that now. But I was like. I'm about 130 pounds now, so I was like 40 pounds lighter than I am. Yeah, I, yeah, I that's incredible, frame. yeah. Yeah, so I was skin and bones. And I remember when I showed up to 12-step meetings, everyone thought I was hooked on cocaine. So are you not eating? Are you, I what, what's going on? I was because I had lost that boyfriend that I okay. thought was my ideal. So it wasn't... I, we break up, I move back in with my mom, and I start recovery. Mm-hmm. So, and, I, and some amazing things happened. For instance, I had no money. I had... I had been using my ex-boyfriend's car and I had to give the car back. Yeah. We broke up, right? And yeah. like he let me he was nice. He let me use it for like an additional month. Talk about a good yeah. codependent, right? Damn. I know. So I had to give the car back and I was so scared because I, I I'm a worker bee. I've always had a job. I was yeah. like, what am I gonna do? But I had that moment where I was like, I'm in recovery, I have to trust mm-hmm. in God. And I gave the car back and it was so, it was that, that moment of surrender almost immediately Mm -hmm. after I get a call from my dad. He wants to come visit at my mom's house and see me and my sister. Mm -hmm. Turns out my grandmother had decided Mm -hmm. to give money to each of her four kids. And my dad took the money, turned around and split it between me and my sister. And Mm -hmm. it was just enough for me to buy a car and and six months of insurance. So that's a first sign of like. Yeah, like God, things can be okay. And things some, are, yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. a, it was a, it was the wink from God that I needed. Right. It was like a little miracle that it was my evidence yeah. of God. I I'm a science girl. I needed evidence. Yeah, as much as I don't want to believe, it's hard not to believe sometimes. You know when yeah. those things come through. That's. I recently had somebody t- ask me, "Is it odd or is it God?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a good one. You know, it's not good. Yeah. So so I get sober, and I'm about five months in, and I had found a new hostage i started mm-hmm. dating this guy somebody in the rooms no okay. no and as a matter of fact he'd be like how long do you have to go to those classes yeah i love when people call them classes it's, Class- so, it's, it's so, so weird awesome. it's so yeah. funny um how long do you go to those classes so um so this is the night i met bob so i'm five months sober maybe probably four months sober um, and I had gone to Great America, this amusement park, and <laughs> me and Todd had taken a picture together. Mm-hmm. It was like a Polaroid right in front of the carousel or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it was, and I'm platinum blonde at this time. There's a picture of me over there. I just saw that I earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> platinum blonde, 100 pounds, soaking wet. And um, I'm at this coffee shop, as we do, after mm-hmm. a meeting. It was like after a meeting or something where everyone was at a coffee shop, big group of people, young people. And I was like, hey, I went to the amusement park, and look, there's a picture of me and my boyfriend. And she goes, oh, that's cute. Hey, so-and-so, check this out. And they start passing the picture around. And I'm like, who has my picture? Bob has my picture. <laughs> He's holding a picture of me and my boyfriend. Yeah. 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 I'm looking right now at this picture of Arlena, platinum blonde. 
I this like you better as a brunette, date. but that's pretty damn cute. Yeah, that's brunette. your first date? That's our first oh, date. Yeah. That was like our that. first yeah. weekend yeah. together as a couple. We yeah. came out that weekend. It was pretty So funny. do you go, hey, give me my picture back, you creepy guy? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So right. I'm like, who has my picture? And, and it's Bob. And so I go up to him, and I he was like, oh, that's a cute picture. Here you go. And I was like, what's your name? And he goes, Bobby. And I thought he said Bubby. And I was like, <laughs> and that was a nickname that my ex-fiance used. Mm. And I thought that was weird, because I think that's actually a Jewish term for grandparent. Anyway. Oh, I didn't know that. Sidebar. Is it? Yeah. yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, oh, Jay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, he gives me my picture back. We introduce ourselves. We start chatting. And I was like, oh, he's a really nice guy. I didn't think yeah. anything of it. But everybody's meeting at this coffee shop like regularly and I see him more and more and we right. start becoming friends and the more I get to know him the more I wanted to know about him mm-hmm. you know he had five or six years sober at this time mm-hmm. yeah. and I was that's like, big time that's yeah, really yeah. Was a big deal. Yeah. I was like oh my god he's young and tall and handsome and but I don't notice it really right away until my girlfriend Amanda she goes the boys we're at the coffee shop and a group of the boys walk by he's there and she goes Bobby Allen's got a cute butt. And I was all like, <laughs> <laughs> I go, the squats like, I was doing. The yeah, squats. Yeah, squats are doing him good. The lunges. Go. And then it just like turned my head. I was like, what? Oh my God. He, mm. You are right. Right. I do have and a good butt. Yeah, he sure mm. does. And then it was so funny because. <laughs> Please edit that. So okay. So you know Go that ahead. Podcast? I'm not editing that. Right. Um, over time, I start comparing Bob to this guy I'm dating mm. and the guy I'm dating. Up here, up in your head. You're, yeah, I'm comparing guy. them. and So pros, you're still with the... the Todd, this Todd guy Todd. Guy, yeah. yeah. Pros yeah. and cons list right there. I, you know, I just... They, he, poor Todd was falling short. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, because look at Bob. He's handsome. He's spiritual. Bro. He's, you know, yeah. clean and Nobody sober. Nobody compares to you, no. Bob. No, Todd is on steroids and he drinks <laughs> beer. And, and he thinks a good date is great America. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Well, it used to be. It He's used to be a, all right. He believed in God, but yeah. it was... Listen, it's just yeah. what he was. How yeah. could you can't? I spoke your language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and as got, time goes by, your life is starting to be entrenched in yeah. recovery and, yeah. and, and mobs, yeah. you know, on yeah. top of that. Yeah. And poor Todd, you know, I had to, it took me like a week to break up with him. I couldn't get the words mm-hmm. out. I wasn't a good communicator. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't communicate the fact that I was breaking up with him. And, and finally, yeah, did, he, he, did you meet this guy at those classes? Is that what <laughs> yeah. Yes. He was so mad about yeah. that. And he goes, these people are brainwashing you. Yeah. And my thought was, my brain needs some washing. Yeah. So I'm okay you with that. You have no idea, Todd. You have no idea. <laughs> so anyway, I actually didn't know if he really liked me that way or not. But I ended up breaking up with Todd. And then he and I were like dating <laughs> dating later that day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So Five months sober. I just wanted to <laughs> I, I, I recommend against that. I know that where you're going. With it. So wait. Somebody should have known. There's that. a story there. <laughs> Tell oh, well, it. She's telling that. An what? excuse. No, no. This is not a 13th step. I wasn't out looking for anything. <laughs> well, I know. It no. sounds to me like you're innocent. You're just you're holding on. I to wasn't. Picture. This dude, woman look comes at her. up to you. You have a nice. So, what, she what spawned the web, it? dude. Right. I just right. got she caught in the, the web. I'm I'm here with you. I wasn't not looking. Okay, so when she approaches you and you start talking. You're you're so in there too. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're you're like yeah. this is a cool person. Yeah. So I saw her. I mean he, right. immediate I was attracted, right? Mm-hmm. And then I heard she had a boyfriend and I go, Okay, she's off limits, right? Mm-hmm. So a little story before this, right? So I had girlfriend I mean, I was young. I was eighteen, I had girlfriends in the program. And you know, <laughs> Our community isn't the bedrock of mental sta- stability. I'm not saying Certainly. I'm perfect, right? So I had a, a series of relationships that were crazy, right? Yeah. And when, when I, I say, say my favorite saying yeah. is the goods, what is it? The goods, the odds are good, but the goods are odd. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, or, or I like to say, uh, crazy in the head, good in bed. Yeah, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, listen to her. So, um, I, through a series of relationships, I realized that I was not, um, I wasn't taking care of myself at that right, level, right? right. I need, if I wanted something serious, I had to really take a look. So I decided that I'm done dating, I'm done um, going out, there'll be no sex, there'll be no nothing mm-hmm. for two years. Mm-hmm. Two years, I was single and alone working on myself. I dived in and, and got, thank God, I, I think it was another God moment because at that point in time, 
I jumped into men's meetings Mm -hmm. big time. And that's where I reside today, right? I mean, that's where I'm fed. And that's where I learned about myself. I took the steps serious. I got really, you know, this was when I had two, three years sober, right? Mm -hmm. Because what was I, five years or six years? Yeah, five or six years. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a few years of, you know, recovery recovery and really inventorying and all that stuff. And and what's really cool is I remember, uh, you know, at a certain point in time, I'm a young man. It's like, okay, I'm ready. I want to start getting out there. And my mother, she goes, you know, and, and... some people disagree with this, but I'm on, uh, you know, my mom said, listen, go to God with what you want in a relationship mm-hmm. to the exact detail of everything that you want, everything. Mm-hmm. So I would pray, you know, I wrote a list of what I wanted in a woman mm-hmm. or in an ideal relationship, I should, I should say. Everything down to the hair color, right? Mm-hmm. Arlena is everything down to the hair color. Mm-hmm. I'm a brunette type of guy. She was blonde, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know this, but she, you know, she was coloring her hair at the time. Right, right. She's a brunette, right? My authentic right. self. Right. <laughs> authentic self, right? So um, the story is, yeah, we met, right? And uh, I was extremely attracted. I found out she had a boyfriend. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, she's off limits. No problem, right? I just keep doing my thing. Mm-hmm. And then the coffees and the coffees. And then it, there's just, there was chemistry there. We right, would talk right. till, you remember that time? We I would know. talk like. Till four in the morning. Yeah. There could have been a nuclear explosion in downtown Campbell. I could care less. Mm-hmm. I, I was eyeball to eyeball, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I want to be. It was the absolute being present, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we just connected. That's in an awesome world. story. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, AA or recovery in general, places like that, right? It's, um, it could be a hunting ground, mm-hmm. but it's also, you know, you can make these relationships with people because yeah. our nature is to open up. You know, right, and so there's, yeah. it's, you know, it's easy to, within uh, the first couple of days of meeting somebody to like know way more about them mm-hmm. than you would sort of at work meeting somebody, yeah. you know, it's, and it, it, like I said, I mean, it could be a safe thing and it could, it could be a dangerous thing too, you know, yeah. between men and women. So the, the cautionary tale for people meeting others in recovery is there's this thing called trauma bonding. It's mm-hmm. an act, it's a real That's thing. Okay. I see where you're going. Go ahead. Yeah. It's yeah. trauma bonding. So. We are sharing on such a gut love that we become bonded, but trauma bonding isn't necessarily the kind of bond that can go the marathon of a marriage, yeah. right? It's mm-hmm. not sustainable. Yeah. And so I think that's why it's so important to, like we dated for two years before we even got engaged, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that was all Bob's, you know, Bob had the presence of mind and body and he knew who he was, that he wasn't going to do it until he was ready. And he was, he's very heart led. Like mm-hmm. he's a guy that follows his heart. Mm-hmm. And it just wasn't time, right? you know, and I am so grateful that, that he gave us that time mm-hmm. to go through a couple of years. Yeah, you were ready. You knew. Well, let me ask yeah, that now. Yeah. So in that stretch of time, what is your take on it when, you know, Bob's got the presence of mind and he's got the sobriety under his belt Yeah. and here's... Um, he's emotionally sober. I am not. Right, right. And it was really hard for me to wait two years. Mm-hmm. It was because I knew right away that I knew I was in love with him. Before did you think we you were going to lose him in that two year span, or did you just want to be married? Or... I just, I really wanted to be married. I wanted, I don't, <laughs> I thought, and then it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of funny that, you know, looking back, there was a whole process about letting go of the, what I thought was the, remember I told you how I thought love was going to save me? Mm-hmm. I thought I was so close mm-hmm. to getting the thing that was going to save me. But he wasn't ready. Okay. So the very thing that was supposed to save me was my own obstacle. And then I had to start questioning, why did I want to be married? And I, ever since I was young, I thought it would validate me. I thought it would validate me as a human, as a woman. When a man is willing to put a ring on your finger and dedicate his life to you, Mm -hmm. it's very validating as a woman in in the eyes of society. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a societal thing, and that's Mm -hmm. not, nothing to be ashamed of for sure, feeling that way, you know, and that's that's probably a very I knew I wanted a family. I Mm -hmm. always had known that I wanted to fall in love, get married, and have a family. So what was that stretch of time like? I mean, were you... You're getting sober, mm-hmm. and you're coming off of this sort of these crazy feelings. Now you're getting sober. He's yeah. he's been in it for a little while. Yeah. Are you a handful? I mean, are you? Well, that's um, a question for him. But what <laughs> I'll tell you about me is that I don't do anything in half measures. Mm-hmm. Um, in in the program, they'll talk about how we turn character defects into assets, mm-hmm. and the 
one way, one character defect that I turned into an asset was my self-centeredness and my selfishness. Mm -hmm. I attacked the steps the same way I would pursue drugs and alcohol and men, Mm -hmm. to be honest. And I gave it, it gave it my all. It became my, recovery became my obsession. Unraveling the mess that was my heart and soul and my feelings Mm -hmm. Um, that became my obsession and I talked about my feelings I went to workshops I did steps Mm. I read books I read 24 books my first year of recovery I I went for it but in the meantime yeah Bob you've got a lot of this sort of under your belt and is it do you have a feeling of waiting or of of her playing catch up emotionally or excellent question that's a great question question. Um, I gotta tell you I, to this day, I don't know anybody else that goes after recovery like Arlene. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm being absolutely honest, um, mm-hmm. not because we're here on this podcast. Blows me away. Leaps and bounds of where, from where I am, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, the tenacity, the, the go-getter. It's, you remember how right. it was earlier? She's a, go, she's a go-getter. She, right. when, when her folk, it's like lasers. It's just laser-focused, right? Mm-hmm. And I saw that. And I saw her working on recovery. Um, at the time, I think there was a little bit of fear of getting married. At you know, I, I, I'm very cautious. I, I, yeah. I watch people, right? Mm-hmm. And um, kind of giving her a chance to grow, mm-hmm. giving myself a little space to grow. Is this real? Is this not real? I know. I you know, I've been here right, f- for right. a while. I know what's you know that golden, that pink cloud. I know the honeymoon phase. Mm-hmm. I get it. I totally get it. So I want to see. Does this thing have legs type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Am I the man that can get married right now, right? Because I had the same goals as her, the same, you know, dreams of mm-hmm. I want a family, I want children, I want to be the father that I never had, mm-hmm. right? And um, I, I, I give it to the men. The men taught me how to treat a woman. The mm-hmm. men in the program taught me how to treat uh, a woman like a lady, mm-hmm. right? And... Um, I'm I'm forever grateful to this right. day. I still learn that stuff. Right. So, as you know, as time goes on and you're starting to get you know your legs underneath you, um, you guys move out together. How soon mm, do you yeah. guys are you guys creating a home together? We were pretty much inseparable when we right. literally when she dropped that guy. I was head over heels for mm-hmm. her, right? And it was hard because I'd see her and I just had to. I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm not the guy that's shady and goes behind the back and yeah. hey, you got a boyfriend. Let me. That's just yeah. sleazeball stuff. I despise that. What happened? Alice. Never so, despise it. Did you? But did you guys make a home together? Did you guys get an apartment? <laughs> well, it was yeah. funny because I was living at my mom's house and he was living at his mom's house, and uh, we knew we were pretty young. You know, I'm 25. Um, we are dating. We're dating for about nine months. When yeah. just the issues of living at your parents, it's just not yeah. Bring it up. Yeah, I don't remember something happened. It was like I something happened, together, like at my mom's house, yeah. and I, or maybe you were mad at your mom, yeah. or I was mad. It's like this is bullshit. We should get our own place. Back when you could do that, we yeah. just go, let's go get a spot. Yeah. You know, nowadays, <laughs> yeah. it's like okay, let's wait for seventeen months of yeah. you know paychecks, and yeah. then maybe yeah. we can yeah. get in yeah, on a tough. list. It's yeah. tough now, but we moved in together at nine months. <laughs> okay, of yeah. dating. That's, that's kind of early. Yeah. yeah, but we had been Absolutely. inseparable from day one, mm-hmm. and. I, yeah. I got to tell you, when we... Well, there's a difference between inseparable, out and about, and... Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Everything just fit. Yeah. Everything about our families, our political views, mm-hmm. our recovery, Bro, our friends... Our pillows smell the same. <laughs> Trip on that one. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> it's a shampoo. It's a shampoo issue, isn't it? No. No, dude. I mean... Have, you know, you smell somebody else's pillow. Yeah. It's like it smells like them. And if it's someone, if it's your beloved, then it's like, okay with that. oh, it's their smell. And then I remember going over to his house for the first time <laughs> and seeing his room. I walk into his room and I go, I wonder what his pillow smells like. I picked up his pillow, smelled it, and it was like, Bang! I was like, oh my god, this smells exactly like my pillow. <laughs> this sounds like a conversation you guys had. Did you guys have that conversation? Yeah, of course. So I wait, did. you're at mom's house. Yeah. You're at mom's house. Yep. Yeah. So you guys are at parents house so yeah you we're guys losers. are probably like let's get the yeah, yeah that's we're, young. we're young right, right? Okay, we're it's young. a totally a different different time in, yeah in era it was okay so yeah you know later i just on, got sober my my yeah. i didn't get to go to rehab right my she mom's house was my yeah, rehab. Was rehab yeah God so bless. you guys move in together we move in together and you're you're let's so say happy. you guys are deciding on who goes to a meeting when i mean you guys can pretty much do what you want there's no you know kids involved so yeah you guys and he's are a men's meeting guy working your program yeah. in the way that you work your program yeah, yeah. And can I ask, uh, was there any, did you guys ever have any problems with other people in the program with, you know, um, 
you know, you're young, you're a mm. young woman, and oh boy, here comes here come the guys, or oh, yeah. you know that type of thing, or were you guys known from the beginning as this is Bob and Arlena? Like I know you guys now, you're still, I know. you're like a you know pillar, I, I, <laughs> but I cannot I, I, imagine yeah. a point when we somebody went. doesn't know that that's Bob's gal Guy, guys were and after vice versa. Her. Guys yeah. were after her, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, they couldn't get her. They just couldn't hold a candle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but, uh, I get that 100%. But, but it mean, was, just, when it was on, a, it was on. She, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it was. And I ask that because it, it is a factor in, in just not just in the world in general, but especially yeah. like in, in AA. It's like you see a woman walk in the room, and the, the guys are like, well, okay, there's yeah. one I'm going to try for, you yeah. know, and it's like frustrating. Yeah. You know? I So I hadn't dated anybody in the program. Oh, okay. So yeah. it wasn't like I was going to. He and I were going to show up at a meeting, and my ex was going to be there. Yeah, there goes that. So, yeah, yeah there, wasn't that, there wasn't that weirdness. Okay. And then um, he'd had um, a couple girlfriends in the program before, but it wasn't, it yeah. was never awkward for me. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the confidence between you two A lot of broken hearts there. Yeah. when no, Bob and yeah. I got together because yeah. <laughs> there were all these girls that were super sad. It was two years. I wasn't dating. Yeah. You and know and what he mean? was like the prize, Z- right? Yeah, yeah. And I just come in and swooped him. Yeah. <laughs> How did this happen? I don't know about pride, but, yeah. <laughs> so as time goes on, then you guys decide to get married. Yeah. Yeah. Where finally we? wore him down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what, but what does that look like? You know, when you say, you know, you wore him down, I know you're, yeah. you're kidding, but I mean, at, it was at some hard. point, yeah. you guys are seeing that things are working out. Yeah. I mean, she's messy. You're clean. That That's. Yeah. No yeah. longer an issue. Yeah. Oh, so. there was a money issue too. Yeah. Do well, we're going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, yeah. Because we had to work that out. Because mm. um, mm-hmm. from my perspective, I, I was, was horrible with money, by the way. Right. Yeah. I used yeah. to be horrible. Yeah, he used to be horrible yeah. with money. And I was, I had always, I had always had a job mm. and I had grew up poor. Yeah. So I was obsessed with money. Yeah. Always oh, okay. have been, okay. to, truth be told. Yeah. Okay. I've always been obsessed with money. So um, I was really good at managing my money. Okay. I had a car. I still, even though Daddy had to help me a little bit there at the mm-hmm. end. I, I, but Bob was super frivolous, and you drove me Bro. insane. Yeah, crazy. Just, you know, making crazy. it rain everywhere. Would, yeah, that yeah. that area of my life was mm-hmm. unmanageable. So and, the house was clean, yeah. but he was a man. But yeah, he, but, right. you know, so yeah. it's like a fair trade. I would have so been a starts, good Mr. Mom, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> so it starts to come together, and you guys yeah. are living together, and so now the financial thing is is it's it's finding its way i mean yeah. are you guys able to communicate um about it was, finances it was, it was rough or it was it was a lot yeah it was a lot and got or is you. rough like arguments or is oh, rough sure. just yeah, like absolutely. you do what you want to do yeah no. there, was, there was some so f-bombs so, drop for sure yeah. right so what was cool that what we learned in the very beginning was how we were going to resolve resentment yeah in our relationship okay so i had a sponsor i would call her up and she was actually really good friends with bob and uh, this girl, Julie, and I would call her up and I'd be like, Bob did this, Bob did that, Bob, Bob, mm-hmm. Bob. He's yeah. my problem. And she'd be like, okay, cool. I don't sponsor him. <laughs> yeah. That bitch, how dare she? I know, I was so bitter. <laughs> I was like, it was shocking and offensive. And right. I was mm-hmm. like, fuck all y'all. Mm-hmm. But what she did was is she took me through a 12-step process. Mm-hmm. Like we would, you know, go through the whole thing. And I would do like an inventory around our relationship. Mm-hmm. And... By the time I was done working with her, she would help me gain empathy towards his position. She would help me see that my selfishness Mm -hmm. and my controlling behavior around money was causing him pain. Right. And I'd be like, oh, I'm the asshole. And, Mm -hmm. sorry to cut you off, but she was doing that with her women. Mm -hmm. I went to my men. And mm-hmm. said that almost the exact same thing, mm-hmm. and they'd say, uh, "What's your part?" Right, right. They didn't give. They they're like, "No, no, 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 no. You have a part. What is this?" Right. Okay. Specifically, my sponsor at the time, uh, the time Dan R. Mm-hmm. That guy knows my soul. You okay. know what I mean? He's the one I dropped my first fifth step with. He knew immediately what was going on. So you guys are taking, yeah. I mean, it's basically like therapy sessions, yeah. obviously, like we know. You yeah. know you're you're yeah. working with some other people. You're working with some other people yeah. instead of instead of bringing it to your own kitchen table and, and kind of vomiting all over each other. I mean, you're able to resolve some things yeah. before you attack each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. I mean, is that... Yeah, and it was really getting specific on where I was supposed to take responsibility Mm -hmm. and what I had to let go of. Mm -hmm. And what I learned about the money thing is, like, I was really driven by this idea that um, I wanted to get married. I wanted to save money for a wedding Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so that's why I was being controlling. And 
it was it was just um, going through the process helped me sort out what was my responsibility and what wasn't, right. and where was I being selfish, self-seeking, dishonest? Okay. Where was I trying to hide a good motive behind a bad one? And it all played out around money. And how how realistic is that? Was that at that time? You know, because we all say that, we all hear that, we all it have those painful. conversations. Yeah, when it somebody was does painful. that, were you able to turn that advice into action relatively quickly and with efficiency, or were you ba- was, were you fighting it for a long time? It wasn't. It wasn't like I was fighting it. I yeah. just was coping with these feelings and these ideas. Like I wanted what I wanted when I wanted. Yeah, it. and it yeah. was. It was hard to allow for somebody else's timing. I remember her telling right. me, Bob, this is Bob's life too. Mm-hmm. He gets to make his own decisions mm-hmm. and you get to make your own decisions. And so a relationship is really about allowing somebody else to be who they are. Absolutely. And respecting their respecting their decisions. Mm-hmm. If he didn't want to stay home and cook dinner instead of eat out, that was his... Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is his life. He could, he's a grown-ass man. He can do whatever he wants, right? And if I'm going to be pissed about that, well, I, there are things I could do. I could save money. Mm-hmm. I could, you know what I mean? It was like I had to take responsibility and then let go of some things right. like the timing of when everything was going to... It was like picking your battles and the, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it was really... Um, I needed that trusted advisor mm-hmm. to walk me through my decision process and mm-hmm. to help me ask the right questions. Right. It wasn't who who was I going to marry. It, it was maybe when was I going to get married. Yeah. You know? Yeah, was, absolutely. Yeah, do I, do I want... Do, do I want this to unfold in a peaceful, loving way? Can, can I let it blossom? Right. Or am I going to force this thing? Right. Am I going to steamroll? Am I going to be a total bitch? And by the way, when I'm a bitch... He doesn't have to look at his part. Yeah. So it was like it was like lots of little things along the way to help me see think of things in a different light that allowed me to behave differently than right. after that. And then as my behavior changed and I started trusting the process more, I felt like my controlling um, behaviors um, subsided slowly over time. As we, you know, it's like yeah. exercise; you have to bump up against it over right. and over yeah. again in order to make better, better decisions every time. So it was a process. It was painful. I I think what we're really good at is we allow the space Mm -hmm. for our lives. And that space gives us the room to grow, Mm -hmm. right? So she goes to her women, I go to my men. We all look at our part. And when we come back, there's that space there, Mm -hmm. right? We're not at each other's throats. We're not a point, you know, there might be a blow up. There's always usually a blow up in an argument, right? Mm -hmm. But then we know from the program that we have to, it's, dude, I am selfish, self-centered, just like she was been Mm -hmm. talking about. We have to get apart. We have to get some clarity. Arlena says it all the time. I cannot resolve the conflict Mm -hmm. that's in my mind with the mind that created it, right? Mm -hmm. I have to, I need perspective. And we, you know, that space allows us to grow to another level, Mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying we got the corner market on relationships, but so far, so good, right? Yeah, you got so it's after yeah. 24 years together yeah. he is still my best mm-hmm. friend and my most favorite person on the planet right. and that's the same so that's yeah. you know that's for me how, how quickly was that coming to you though at that time i mean you it's guys a trip, were able dude. to because uh, so i'd t- asked her yeah. i'd asked her the same thing so yeah. it's like you know you guys are wrestling yeah. with it you know yeah. separately and coming yeah. together yeah let's just put so we're t- talking about money but let Let's put every topic in that same that, Yeah, instance, and that's kind of right? where I'm going, too. Like. In that, yeah. So it's like whether it be money, you know, kids. sex, kids, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. That was our process, mm-hmm. right? The one thing that to this day gets me is that um, I know I'm loved and I know I'm safe, mm-hmm. right? I can be me. I can actually be me, right? right? And um, she loves me for who I am and all my flaws, all my, you know, my little quirks all that right. i'm a trippy guy you know what i mean <laughs> i got my i got i got my issues right but uh she loves those issues yeah. right? right some some of them she may not like all the time but she allows me she leaves that room for us to grow right that's so, one thing i can attest to and i'm going yeah. back just a, a minute or two yeah. when you said you know living having you know some yeah. separate things in life you know that yeah. bob needs to be bob yeah. is as well known as you guys are in the phrase Bob and Arlena, that's a phrase to me. You know, Bob and Arlena, <laughs> you guys are Bob over here 
and Arlena. Like I Bob know a Lena. lot about you, and yeah. I know yeah. you know I know that you have your things, and yeah. I know Bob. You know yeah. Bob, Bob's got his things, yeah. and and I'm realizing right now as we're talking just how yeah, you know how prominent that guy's that is in your guys' yeah. lives. That's, yeah. that's actually pretty impressive, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kids come along, mm. <laughs> and how does that change things? Little kids, Little kids are hard yeah. on a relationship. Yeah. They really are. So how long did you guys have when they were born? I was like, I was like eight years sober. I was, what, 30? Six or eight. When we, um, I was... Uh, I mean, I was, 30 years old. I was right? 33 when I had my first child. Okay. Yeah. And I was 25 when I got sober. And yeah. so did that changes how many meetings you guys are going oh. to oh. and all that. Dude, and that's, that's a period of our life that was <laughs> pretty... Uh, dark. Yeah. yeah, it was a dark... It's a, a dark lot of time. growth. Why there, is it? Dude. Why is it a dark time? It's like equal parts intense and joyful. Yeah. So th- mm-hmm. at that point in time, so Travis was born in the year two thousand. Uh, at this point in time, I'm in the tech uh, industry, mm-hmm. right? Silicon Valley is the mecca, right? And at that point, we decided that Arlena, as she as well was in the tech, decided that we need her to stay at home to raise mm-hmm. our son. So we decided to move to Stockton, California. Mm-hmm. I had no put no st- research. I was able to we buy had a friend. We, yeah, we had a friend that said you got to do it. There. I could buy a brand new house right. built the way I also wanted it built. Also known as classy Stockton, yeah, California. exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. The all American town, apparently. But uh, we made that choice. And um, how we long were you guys in Stockton? Fourteen long months. Yeah, that was brutal. Oh, that's okay. So yeah. it was. I remember talking to you about this. It was a very short stint. It was short because he was working graveyard in San Francisco. So he driving was one hundred and sixty for- miles a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was uh, uh, making the commute from Stockton to San Francisco, working at night. He'd work four tens, and so mm-hmm. um, that year he probably went to three meetings. Right, as the closest ever. That would have been drinking. Yeah, that would have been my next question. Is yeah, yeah and, my, and I had a baby. And, and what are you no doing? Support. For, right. And the first meeting that I went to, he's a tiny little baby in a carrier. And I went to the meeting that I knew of, which there's not, there weren't a lot out there at the time. There, not very many good meetings. Not super happy about it. Anyway, I take my little baby and I'm, and they, it, I, they asked me to leave because I had a baby. Mm-hmm. A woman asked me to leave. Wow. I know. Wow. Right. So the resentment is just Bone. thick and rich. I hadn't and... been to a meeting in six weeks. I was desperate. I showed oh. up at a meeting with a tiny little baby and I'm like sitting by the door ready to bolt if he starts crying. I'm like, okay. Yeah, you're doing. I don't want yeah. to be disrespectful, but I right. really need a meeting. And she was like, I'm so sorry. The insurance doesn't, it says no children. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. So you last a little while longer there, and then you come on back. We're like, let's get the fuck out of yeah. here. So 9-11 happens. Yeah, right? 9-11. And, uh, and we just wanted to go home. Dot-com bubble burst. I lost well, my job. Remember that? It didn't happen. So um, I got laid off. We're in this, So the, before the um, housing market crashes, so we yeah. move out to Stockton and buy a four-bedroom house for $160,000, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, a year later, it's worth $260,000. Mm. Thank God. So um, yeah, it was we just, a good 9-11 happens. <laughs> We're like, we got to get it. I want to go home. Yeah, I miss yeah. my friends. I miss my meetings. I miss my mom. Yeah. We come home. And I have never been so happy in my entire life. Yeah. I've got this little new little guy. He's a year old-ish. Mm-hmm. And we come home, and I'm so happy to be home. And he gets laid off. Mm. Yeah. So, But we have some money in the bank, so we have a little cushion. Yeah, thank God. And then we ended up getting into this house, thank God, like 16 years ago. Otherwise, we'd never be able to. This house here. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. So these financial decisions that got you there, mm. would you ever been able to make those on your no, own? No, I mean, zero. My credit was it's horrible. Just, Mind-boggling, right? Horrible. I mean, I was in the same, yeah. the same yeah. boat. I mean, that's yeah. and it's all you know. I mean, that came from your youth. You said you were raised poor. Yeah. So that, but that's yeah. a. I was good at It's a fear, money. a healthy fear, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to finances. Sure. But it's also, you know, when you talk about an obsession over money, it's like that can also be dangerous, which almost led to you guys, yeah. you know, yeah, which is problems in the beginning. Which know? is funny now because I sort of became less responsible with money, <laughs> and he became more responsible. We kind yeah. of balanced out, we like grew there. Up. Yeah, I had to like. But that's work around the program. Yeah, I mean absolutely. that really is. Yeah. It's, a, it's about yeah. having conversations yeah. and yeah. and being open about things yeah. like that. You know. Yeah. I mean, I had a very much a poverty mindset, mm-hmm. and there were certain things that he was comfortable receiving that I had to learn. Like mm-hmm. I and I had to learn it was okay for me to receive things. Mm-hmm. Like, you mean getting um, help? You mean no? I mean actual things like being willing to spend money on myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I wasn't willing right. to spend any yeah. money on right. myself. I was always looking for the bargain for, 
like what was the minimum viable yeah. that's me <laughs> yeah. yeah and he would he would go for, he would buy extravagant things and I'd be like you are insane right but what it said was that he recognized that he had value and that he right. deserved nice things right and so it's nice things you know I, I realized that too just recently it's like why buy six lamps over your lifetime when you can buy a one really nice right? lamp yeah. you know yeah. and and have that you know it's just you know if you and can do it and it's when it's responsible yeah and when that really shifted for me is when i had my second child mm-hmm. a friend of mine who was married to a doctor came over she and i had babies at the same time actually tyler was like two weeks older than her son mm-hmm. She comes over with this diamond encrusted watch after she has her baby. And she's like, look, I got a push present. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and she's like, oh, you know, when you push a baby out, you get a present. And I was like, I didn't get no damn I present. Get shit. <laughs> and so I got it in my mind that I was going to go get a Louis Vuitton bag. And those mm-hmm. things are fucking expensive, yeah. right? And so um, I tell Bob this. I, I This man denies me nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever I want, I get. Because yeah. he's yeah. just like, you deserve it. Right. Which is... God bless him. So I'm like, I want a Louis Vuitton. He's like, cool. What does that mean? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, where I saw the price. I'm oh, okay. So it was funny. Got to so sell some more stuff. We go to the, we go to, I pick out a bag and we go to Louis Vuitton and we buy it and it's eight bills mm-hmm. for a bag. Mm-hmm. And I want to vomit. Mm-hmm. I am so sick to my stomach that I just, I remember that. Like yeah. everything in my closet came from Target at that point, right? Yeah. I'm a stay at home mom with two kids. I don't, I'm not in a job. I have a daycare at my house. I don't need, nice things so I come home and I'm so twisted up that I did this horrible yeah. thing I spent $800 on a purse <laughs> I call my mother-in-law his mother and I tell her what I've done and she goes honey this is gonna make me cry she goes honey you deserve it yeah she goes your little girl inside wants that bag and you should have it mm-hmm. and you are worth it and you deserve it and for whatever reason that like busted down this idea it like broke some like a broke a dam inside me that was like maybe i am able to receive right like the one person in the world who would probably criticize me or judge me my mother-in-law you think that would be the person that would be like what the hell are you doing you selfish bitch she was the one that says your little girl wants it and you should let her have it right right and so it's amazing is that sweet yeah that's amazing i love that woman and that's where bob came from you know she's so kind to me yeah no, I'm, I'm telling you, when we came together, everything worked. I loved mm, his mother yeah. right away. To this day, my mother favors my husband <laughs> over me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be whatever. Yeah. yeah, but, he, you know, she didn't raise him. She was, <laughs> right, she was 18 exactly. years she, old coming she, home. You know she got funny? the good mom. Yeah, you know what's right. funny is that before, anytime I brought somebody home to my mom, my mom and my sister would uh, put the x on it. They're like, nope, nope, mm-hmm. nope. They were not having it. <laughs> I'd bring Bob Allen home. They're like... He charms, he charms yeah. these two ladies, and I got their blessing, and I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, it's I'll on. say about Bob is when I when you talk when yeah. when I talk to you, and I've heard other people say this is you have an ability to make a person feel like they're the only person in the room that you're talking to. Oh, thank you. You know, there's eye That's contact, true. and it's you know thank you turn you. to that person, and yeah. you you know, and it doesn't matter. I mean, there's even times when you have to tell yeah. me, "Hey, hold on, I'm talking to this guy," but then when it's my turn, yeah. or, or when you're you know. Thank you. You yeah. turn right to me, and it's like I that's try. a yeah. that's a uh, that's quite a trait, you know what I mean? Because I, I feel yeah. comfortable around you, I feel safe around you, and I feel like I can tell you anything. Thanks, you buddy. know what I mean? So, Vice how are we doing here? Awesome, we're Was good. This a success? Good. Yes, yeah. I think we're done. Are we okay? I listen. I could talk to you for you're a great. You're very. Here. I could keep yeah. going on and on too, but I'm like, I think we've got something good going here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank I you for taking the time to yeah. do this. Yeah, I'm glad that we did this. Yeah, we had a discussion, and it was like. People kept asking me, when are you going to interview Bob? And I'm like, right. how can I interview my own husband? I already know all the answers. It would just be question. disingenuous. And yeah. you know. Yeah. And I also wanted to find a way to make myself part of like the podcast. Yeah. I started listening and I'm like, Arlene is a You're badass. good, buddy. I mean, it's a really it's a fun thing. Yeah, yeah we should make, thing. It, make us should, a regular. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my co-host. That would yeah. be super fun. We tried to do it once <laughs> a long time ago when I first started doing it with right. Lisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we just couldn't. I couldn't make the audio work. Yeah. We, the levels were all got it down really well now. I mean, thank it's a you. great podcast. Thank, thank you for you. letting me be part of it. And yeah. uh, thank you guys for sitting down with me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so on. much. Right. 
One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed the podcast today, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher and leave a review. And if you'd like to make a donation to the podcast and help me keep the lights on, you can do so by visiting odatchat.com. There's a donation button or membership button on the right hand side. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us.